Eagle Communications is a leader in advertising. We can put your business in front of thousands of customers during the most watched shows, including local and national sports. Let our employee owners target customers with affordable advertising on over 40 popular TV networks and online with Facebook, Google, and YouTube. From crafting your message to video production, let our team help your business grow. Call today, 785-628-0467. Eagle Communications, our community connected. I'm DJ Dan. I'm the Corporate Production Director for the Radio Division for Eagle Communications. I'm also the Operations Manager for the Manhattan property. I take care of the day-to-day -day operations in the Manhattan property. I also take care of all my production, take care of any scheduling and any promotion or events. There's two things I really enjoy about my job. One is hearing our clients have success stories. The other is when I have a listener go absolutely ballistic because I've made their day. When I hear them and the excitement in their voice, that really keeps me coming back every day. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to our Community Connection. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to the producer and editor of our series, Brandon Cooley. We're at the Kansas State University Agricultural Research Center south of Hayes on the 183 bypass with Joe Becker, weather records keeper, grounds keeper, events coordinator, and ag tech supervisor. And I left out two or three of them on top of that. But primarily for this event, coordinator for the annual fall horticulture night, Tuesday, September 19th, beginning at 6 p.m., right here at the Prairie Star Bedding Plant Trials. Okay, Mr. Becker. <laughs> First of all, what is the Hayes Horticulture Night? What it's, what's it all about? We invite the public to come out here and see what we've been working on all summer to uh, give them an idea of uh, what works in Kansas, what doesn't work in Kansas. This is our 20th year of having this uh, trial. The purpose basically is to see what will grow in Kansas. Um, we invite the public, business owners, uh, property owners uh, to attend uh, because everyone wants to enhance their properties with annual flowers. Um, if you see a property with flowers on it, even if it's a, just a pot of flowers, uh, somehow it uh, uh, improves the aesthetics of the property. and. Uh, uh, we won't even go into values, but just quality of life. And, uh, and so uh, it's quite an investment. When you go to a, a, a garden center to buy flowers in the spring, uh, you know, you're bowled over by the time you get out of there. You, your eyes are bigger than your pocketbook most times. And you've got quite an investment. And with that amount of... Uh, uh, money involved, you want something that's going to grow, uh, that's going to survive it. Uh, it's, it's very disconcerting for people to uh, have all the expectations of something looking great and then it's ashes within three weeks. And uh, granted, they do sell some of these things out there that just will not work out here. Or it's just, um, it's only meant for three weeks. and. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is to show what will grow out here. Um, if you go where well, the public is invited to come out here at any time, uh, and we always say bring two notebooks or uh, have two lists. One is the uh, list of uh, the flowers that you like, the ones that are thriving. Write those down. On the other list, write the ones down that aren't doing very good or did not survive and uh, boy, you want to avoid those. Uh, <clears throat> our aim is basically to provide flowers that take care of themselves. We, uh, uh, are all busy. Nobody, nobody has any time any longer, but we want our places to look good. And so consequently, minimum care, minimum input as far as uh, the clipping the dead buds, the dead heading, uh, watering to a minimum, uh, all these different aspects. And, uh, Plant food to a minimum, uh, yes. fertilizer to a minimum, all, yes. all yes. minimum 
care yes. necessary for yes. these. Um, I would treat these much better mm. if, if that wasn't the, uh, the parameters of the study. It drives me nuts sometimes because I want to clip these things off, clip the dead uh, bloods off, especially with geraniums and the mm. like. Mm. Um, but uh, that's not the aim of the, of the, of the uh, study of the trial. And uh, uh, so it just gives the public uh, uh, an idea of what's out there. 6 p.m., all are invited. Anybody who is oh, yes. interested in growing uh, now, are, let's, let's kind of take a tour here mm. and see what we're going to get. Are these all annuals, Joe? Or are there uh, some perennials? Yes. Uh, well, there's some that self-seed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're annuals, uh, 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 but uh, they reseed, and so they'll come up every year. But um, if you're patient, sometimes they reseed. <laughs> Uh, they'll see there's some volunteers out here in our grass that have come up, gazanias and uh, uh, gypsifolia and uh, uh, some vincas. I've even got a volunteer canna. Um, but uh, for the most part, these are annuals. Why do we do annuals? Uh, perennials bloom once. Mm. Uh, uh, think of irises, think of peonies, think of tulips. Uh, think of uh, chrysanthemums. They're all perennial. They come up every year, but they only bloom one time. Daylilies is another example. They shoot up multiple blooms, but then by uh, uh, mid-July they're done, and that's it. And so all you get is the foliage. With the annuals, <clears throat> they bloom constantly. They're, if they're not blooming, by the, when you're planting them, they are blooming when uh, uh, soon after and they'll bloom all the way till frost. There are some exceptions but uh, for as pretty as they are uh, we tend to tolerate that. So the dahlias, the pentas, uh, those type of uh, varieties. But I gotta tell you Joe when we look <laughs> over the display here first of all we notice that each of the beds has an identifier to it so people can tell what's here, what's growing and you also have some larger uh, notes on the Prairie Star varieties themselves. Uh, it's just beautiful. It's really a testament to the care and the effort that's gone into this project for 20 years. 20 now. years, yes, and unfortunately our budgets are such that it's going to end this year. Uh, we do have a website that will be on uh, uh, that people can look, this, look up the varieties so uh, you, can, you can print those off or make notes and go to the garden center. One of the other aspects of the trial is we only put uh, uh, varieties that are available on the market. We've taken some off if you look back, back in 2005, let's say. The list is a little bit different than it is now. Um, it's a, there may be some petunias there that are great but they're no longer available, so why, why clutter up the list? Um, okay, what, what does it encompass to get on the list? Uh, we go through uh, the variety, we trial it at least twice. Um, and then if it's, if it's uh, performing well, <clears throat> uh, then it makes the list. But we have this trial in four different areas of the state. We have it in Olathe, Hayes, Colby, and Wichita. Mm -hmm. When you think about those locations, the weather patterns, the soils, the conditions are almost opposite in some respects to each other. And so it's a pretty good trial. They like coming to Hayes because they said if the, you hear this a lot about many places, but they say if if it will uh, survive in haze, it will survive anywhere. <laughs> One of our problems is we do not cool off at night. Um, and so the plants have a hard time recovering. Colby, you have the altitude, and it is hot during the day, but it cools off at night. Um, in Wichita and Olathe, they have the humidity. Mm -hmm. They don't have the hot winds, driving winds like we do here. And so uh, we put them up, pretty much put them through the test. And uh, uh, like I said, minimum input. And so, uh, uh, boy, if they make it and if they look good, we're interested. And there'll be some on the list uh, that'll be coming out uh, uh, 
in March and that will make the list this year some new things and uh, we've been doing this since 97 and uh, uh, we like to introduce uh, new uh, lines, new series of products. Uh, I was thinking this morning, petunias. We brought out the Wave series. That's hard to imagine. Uh, they've, they've been here less than 20 years, but uh, the Wave series is just an example of some of the uh, varieties we have tried. I, don't, I can't recall now if that's still on the list. We now have improved varieties that are of the wave intent. There's Tidal Wave, um, gosh, I can't think now, but uh, look on the list, they're on there. And that are, uh, Brent, uh, Brandon, our producer, <clears throat> is going to uh, put that list up so that the Good. website is available for people to access. Okay, let's talk about the highlights of the evening because in addition <clears throat> to looking at the different plants and enjoying the, the color and the, the great look of the area here at the Prairie Star Trials. You've got a lot of people who are coming in that are going to be presenting uh, some short vignettes. As you said in your news release, you <laughs> set out the, the uh, evening comes in a hurry, so these will be short presentations. Yes, it forces us to, to be very brief. And so that's why I invite people to come out on a Sunday or in the evenings when they have more leisure time, they can look at specifically at what they're interested in. But yes, we, uh, we are going to do the, uh, uh, the vegetable garden aspect, the, uh, Ellis, or the cotton, cottonwood uh, mm -hmm. uh, cotton research and extension. extension. Yeah. yeah, that uh -huh. just does not come out right. No, it's, uh, it's <laughs> going to take a while to learn that, I think. Uh, yeah. They're going to be uh, uh, doing the tomato and pepper trials, uh, new varieties that are coming out. And then we have a new uh, feature, which is the backyard garden. They wanted to uh, have an area, a small area that's representative of a uh, residential garden to show that even though you have a small space, you can still produce uh, enough uh, vegetables uh, during the year for a household. And that's and, uh, Ellis County yeah. Master Gardener Mary Lou Maston. Right? That's right, okay. yes. And for the uh, program on Master Gardeners, also uh, Pat Phillips and Terry Pfeiffer reporting on harvest results of the performance vegetable mm -hmm. trials and somebody who's changed position since you and I visited last. Oh yes, The new Holly water Dickman. conservationist for the city of Hayes <laughs> on water smart landscaping. That's Holly Dickman. Yes, yes. Uh, right before us we have some buffalo grass trials that we've had now. This is our third year and I'm sure she'll be using this as the backbone of her program. She's gonna just, uh, just uh, talk very briefly about her program. Another person that we will introduce that I don't know if the public has met is Jamie Sear. She's also mm -hmm. the area forester, yeah. and so she's going to come and uh, say hello and be around for questions afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be a full evening. Yeah, and also we should mention <clears throat> too that one of the components of a good display of, uh, of flowers is soils, and you've got... Uh, Augustine Obor, research soil scientist from yes. K-State coming. Yes, well, he's, he's resident here. Oh, okay. And uh, he's excited to, uh, to give this presentation. We're going to show how to take a soil sample, a representative sample of the area that you're concerned about, and uh, how to send it in. And then, mm. uh, uh, most importantly, how to interpret it once you get the results back. Sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. And so he's gonna simplify it and, uh, ex and explain how that all goes about. And uh, uh, we'll be doing that. We'll actually be taking the soil samples here, uh, just showing how easy it is to do it. It's and not that's really the starting point, isn't it, Joe? That you've gotta <laughs> yes. have good soil that's uh, uh, acceptable for growing uh, good plants. Yes, one of our problems that we have in the in Northwest Kansas is uh, soil chlorosis, iron chlorosis, which is the yellowing of the leaves of the plants. Um, and uh, you have to put on an iron chelate, a sulfur chelate, 
some sort of uh, uh, amendment to improve that. Um, and it can be very frustrating, especially the plants will look great and then all of a sudden they just start declining and you can't figure out why. Same happens with trees too in this yes, area. Yes, yes. One of the, uh, since the, this uh, Prairie Star, getting back to the Prairie Star uh, trials have started, uh, I've now seen improvements with the chlorosis issue. Mm -hmm. Vincas, oh, the vincas used to be terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, they look great until July, mid-July, and then they start, the leaves start yellowing, and you're thinking, oh, more water, more water, whatever. More fertilizer, no, it's the iron. And right behind us here, you can see uh, the, the uh, those are the vincas, mm -hmm. and uh, the leaves are very healthy green. Uh, they've now come out with bigger blooms on them. But uh, the important thing is that plants are healthy now. They uh, have overcome that chlorosis problem. And we have several other varieties now that have uh, overcome uh, fertility problems, disease problems, uh, uh, drought problems, uh, or their uh, less temperature uh, 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 specific on uh, what they will tolerate. Now, our vincas, when we planted those, if anyone had been out here in June and July, they looked awful. Um, they love it hot. Mm -hmm. They love it hot. As soon as we planted, we uh, it we went down to 36 degrees one evening, one night, one morning, and they were not happy. And I kept saying, "Okay, hold on, hold on." And uh, the heat came, and then boy, they thrived. Mm -hmm. So, now about the Prairie Star <clears throat> itself. Uh, the purpose of the trials, as you said, Joe, is to find those plants that are adaptable to conditions in Kansas and to get those plants out, the list out to people so that they can then find them and enjoy yes. them and get a value for their money spent on the yes. plants. Does that pretty well sum up the Prairie Star trials? Yes. Um, the person that uh, envisioned this or started the program was Alan Stevens. I do want to put that in. Uh, He's now retired. Cheryl Boyer out of K-State Horticulture Department is now in charge of the program. Uh, how do we get our varieties? The growers and the breeders and the larger seed companies provide the seed or the plants. We start these in the greenhouse or they give us uh, vegetative cuttings and uh, uh, that's all started in Olathe. And, uh, uh, so there's some trial aspects in that too. If it's very hard for them to get started in the greenhouse, the growers aren't going to want to put up with it, the, the uh, nurseries. And so um, there's a little bit of trial in that as well. Um, since we started, we have trialed at Hayes 1,867 plants. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had uh, some, of course, we have repeated that's uh, we've had 2,400 different uh, uh, plots or different uh, uh, plantings. And uh, out of all of that, we've had 421 varieties that have made the list that have been tried in haze. Olathe has a much larger collection. The reason we do not get everything is uh, the, the amount, the number of plants that the, provi the uh, company provides isn't enough for us to to uh, have them. But uh, we are the second largest uh, uh, of the trials, Olathe being the largest. Um, our producer, Brandon Cooley, is going to uh, kind of go down the rows here. And good. I'd like to have you do the same uh, briefly, if you could, Joe, starting up here with the first part of the row in the cannas, and then just go down the row and we'll kind of give uh, folks an idea of what's out here. That sounds good. Start right there. Uh, the cannas. Uh, typically, um, that's a new idea on cannas. We uh, uh, envision cannas to be about six foot tall. These are now uh, shorter, so now you can actually see the bloom on them. They actually have a larger bloom. Uh, the leaves are a little bit smaller, so they tend to resist the wind a little better. And they make a great patio plant, so you can put these in pots. In fact, that's most likely where they will go. And uh, you can bring them inside or you can let the uh, frost uh, uh, kill the vegetation down, dig them up and, and hold them over the winter and start over again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the cannas, 
the marigolds, um, one of the problems we had with uh, marigolds over the years is spider mites. Uh, when we started this trial, oh my gosh, I don't know what the problem was, but now we have some varieties that have thrived. Uh, the Taishan uh, did very well. We don't have that in our test this year, but uh, those were the marigolds that were used in the uh, Olympics in China. Mm -hmm. They were bred specifically for that event, so it was kind of exciting to uh, see that. Um, of course, the uh, um, verbenas behind us here, the imagination is a standby, and then behind us, um, I can't remember the name, um, the variety, but it's a taller version, and I'm sure it's going to make the list. Finesse, I think. Finesse, is a, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then the Vincas are The Vincas, enough uh -huh. said on those. All you got to do is look at them. Yeah. And uh, uh, the Gypsifolias are uh, the globe type. They're doing well. And, of course, the uh, uh, Celosias. Uh, we went with the plume type as opposed to the uh, coxcomb. We have tested both. Uh, the the uh, uh, coxcomb type are uh, tremendous reseeders, but the plumosa, uh, they, they do put out some seed. The millet, uh, that's kind of, we kind of uh, find that to be interesting. That was actually technically developed here in Hayes. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't get credit for it, but that's where it was developed here through uh, Bill Stegmeyer with the Millet Project. Uh, I remember Bill many years talking ago. about that. Yes. Yeah. The next one is the ornamental grasses. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've done quite a few of those uh, over the years. They're annuals. The seed is generally sterile, so you do have to replant those every year. Um, way down there and it's not looking quite as good as it did but it was looking fantastic when it was hot the tithonia which is the zinnia um, of the zinnia family um, zinnias are native to uh, south america uh, but they call this one tithonia mexican sunflower loves the heat uh, fantastic uh, uh, green leaves uh, and then the echinaceas, there's some lavender in there too. The lavenders have improved. Uh, I was never impressed with lavenders, but lo and behold, they've really, the last couple of years, they've done well. Um, dahlias, um, they've dwarfed those down uh, so they're not so leggy and so you don't have to stake them. And so those are doing well. Zinnias, there's a whole collection of zinnias. These are mostly bedding zinnias. Uh, the Oklahoma series that we had a few years ago were basically for cutting, for uh, bouquets, for florists, or for the homeowner to bring in their home. And uh, these are mostly uh, uh, the bedding type. And they're pretty hardy too. And they're very hardy. Uh, one of the aspects that has been developed in the last few years is uh, powdery mildew. Uh, resistance is now very high on most of them. Uh, which is which was really a problem, especially if you uh, if you do a lot of overhead watering or there's a lot of rain. Now, if you do drip irrigation, it's not as bad because you don't get the water particles on the leaf uh, the leaf, leaf tissue, which causes the problem. Speaking of watering, let's talk for just a moment about that. Uh, behind the main beds here, the uh, master gardeners uh, display is that that we can also see for vegetables. Yes. Uh, as well. So the yes. master gardeners will be here to talk about those. But let's talk about water. How do you water? The way we water here is with an overhead sprinkler uh, because we have the equipment and we have our water sources from a, uh, uh, our irrigation system. Uh, How often? We water if, if we don't get uh, uh, rainfall, we like to have about an inch of water on there a week. Um, as soon as we get done here, I'll be turning the water on since we haven't had any rain in a week and uh, I'll put an inch of water on. Uh, like I said, we treat it just like a homeowner would. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's dry, you, you, the soil's dry, you water it. And as Holly Dickman has said, you water infrequently, but you water Deep. to death. Yes. So that those roots have a chance to really strengthen. Uh, with that deep watering that takes place. Yes, it follows the water down and establishes, uh, uh, and so uh, there's a little bit of moisture reserve. The roots can get to that rather than being shallow rooted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as you've said on our uh, 
uh, weather reports that you send out uh, daily to us. We haven't had a whole lot of rain since those uh, nice rains in, uh, what was that, uh, July, I guess. June early. and July. Yeah. After we planted uh, until the, uh, the middle of July, we had, had received here six inches, uh, a little over six inches. Now there's areas around Hayes that had by far that more than that, but we were lucky. Our rainfalls were an inch or less, mm -hmm. and so they actually uh, soaked in they, they, uh, uh, into the ground rather than running off, so they were by far more beneficial and uh, uh, the like. But overall, we've, our rains, September's been dry, mm -hmm. uh, but we've had timely rains. We haven't had to irrigate as often as we have in some years. Uh, and we are ahead for the year by uh, about an inch and a half uh, so far, but that doesn't mean we may end up, uh, uh, we could end up very dry. I guess we're in the drought uh, zone right now. Mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, we've had uh, so far about 24 inches. Usually our average is right around 20, so we're okay there. But as you say, uh, the the faucet can shut off in a yeah, hurry around yeah. here. 22.73, I believe, is uh, our average. Uh, tell me about uh, the trials. Why are they ending? Budgets. It's strictly um, budget. You just, we just do not have the, uh, the finances to uh, hire another person. Uh, all of this work is done in Olathe, and so we, have to, we would have to uh, find some the girl, the lady that uh, did all our work has now uh, transferred to Pennsylvania and now is working for Burpee oh, uh -huh. and is traveling the world now. It's exciting. <laughs> um, and so we, we have a, a job, we have an opening there and we don't have the money to uh, uh, finance that position any longer. Um, now you've been with this since the inception of yes, the yes, trials, haven't yes. you? Yes, yes. All right. So, uh, any final thought on uh, Horticulture Night before we review again uh, the where and when? Well, everyone come out. Um, it Let should me. it rain, we're gonna go ahead and say, we'll just have it rain that night. <laughs> don't, don't stay home, come on out. We'll have everything in an auditorium building. And uh, so- uh, well, if, It's all done in about an hour anyway, isn't it? Oh, as long-winded as I am, probably not. Oh, all right. uh, I see. Okay. <laughs> all right. He said it. I didn't say that. Hand, uh, hold up the book there so we can see the uh, Prairie Trials official records there that uh, he's showing. Well, I tell you that this is the 20th and last year for the Prairie Star Bedding Plant Trials at K-State and the Hayes Research Center because of budget limitations. 1,867 varieties trialed, 421 selected as worthy of being on the Prairie Star list. Annual Fall Horticulture Night, Tuesday, September 19th, 6 p.m., with uh, many guests, including Augustine Obor, soil scientist, Holly Dickman, water conservationist for the city of Hayes, Yellis County Master Gardeners, Pat Phillips, Terry Pfeiffer, also, uh, first year for the Backyard Demonstration Garden with Ellis County Master Gardener, Mary Lou Maston. And you can bring along your questions, bring along your notebooks, as Joe said. Registration 530, there's no fee. S program starts at six. And if he gets long-winded, you can just walk away from him. But I'm sure you're gonna find some valuable information. Now, the last question here, since this is the final year for the Prairie Star, Will Horticulture Night still continue in some fashion? Have you planned that far ahead yet? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, there will be a Hort Night. Uh, what it will encompass, uh, I'm not sure right now, uh, but uh, we will know a little bit more when springtime comes, when we start planting especially, but uh, in the spring. Uh, there's always something to talk about. Uh, we've, also, we've always concentrated on the flowers as our centerpiece but uh, there's questions about shrubs, there's questions about grass, there's questions about trees. So it's never ending. There's always something to talk about. And indeed we will. Joe Becker, K-State Events Coordinator for the Kansas State Research Agricultural Station in Hayes on Community Connection.
Eagle Communications has partnered with local businesses to allow you to stay connected by watching our high-definition TV channels or surfing the web on our high-speed internet, all free of charge. Some of our partners include The Brass Rail, On the Rocks, Taco Grande, Main Street Gym and Fitness, Sip and Spin, Golden Q, Hey Chevrolet, and A Street Laundry. Stop by and visit one of these hotspot locations today. It's all with your community partner, Eagle Communications, our community connected. Don't miss the Green and Growing show in the noon to 9 p.m. hours on Eagle TV. Ellis County Horticulture Agent Holly Dickman will identify common lawn and garden issues while providing up-to-date information. Watch weekdays in the noon to 9 p.m. hours on Channel 14 or 614. Green and Growing, brought to you by Riedel's Garden Center, a full-service garden center west of Hayes on Highway 40 and Eagle TV. 